Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the weekly landscape update video that I do in this yard in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. Uh, I'm just going to show you uh, some of the progress that I made on the uh, fence in the front yard. And I've got some boulders and some uh, flagstone that I don't believe were in last week's video. I did put a drone up above the yard and talk about how I'm going to lay out all the stones uh, and uh, build some retaining walls and some other things. Uh, last week, if you want to go back and look at that video, you, um, I talked more about the stones in that video. And I'm going to use this opportunity uh, on these weekly videos just to kind of show you what's in bloom. And so if I'm passing by things that have flowers on them in this video, uh, the video from last week or the week before, I probably talked about that plant. So let's get started. So starting out here by the uh, road, uh, I've got a couple different um, blueberries. The uh, some that are just uh, blooming and some that practically have mature uh, blueberries on them. This is a southern high bush uh, variety that I'm actually trying. So it jumped out ahead and I'm kind of lucky on it really because it blooms so early that I probably could have had uh, an issue. There's a fence going in on this side and this brick wall is coming out. I covered that in a video a couple of weeks ago. I've only got one post in over here so far because I want to take that wall out uh, as part of this project. Uh, spinning back around here, this is the uh, uh, driveway driveway entrance. Uh, this fence is coming along. I showed the stone uh, boulders and uh, flagstone in the uh, drone video from last week. Uh, the uh, I'm integrating some of the boulders into the bottom of the fence. Uh, as you can see that, I talked about that in the video last week. Obviously this fence, uh, this side over here is not done yet. Uh, right here, I, I have those three sections finished and um, they're going to get stained with just a really light stain just to protect them. It's more of a protective finish than anything else, but they're going to kind of stay a similar color to this, slightly darker. Anytime you put any kind of protectant on the wood, it's going to be slightly darker. I'm going to let them dry out for a couple weeks before I do that. But you can see I scalloped the top of these uh, upward. I have shot video for all of this, and so I will put something together um, when I'm done with the uh, fence here this week. The ones on the other side I scalloped down. We'll see that when we get over there, but I thought you'd be interested in how I put these boulders in and then scalloped, you know, just cut the uh, boards around them to make the boulders seem like they had sat here for a long time. These uh, stones will be dug into the ground soon and there's a path going to the door and the straight line of this grass will, will change. I always get comments on that straight line, but nothing in this project is finished yet. So um, that's just the beginning of that project. Okay, back and back around. Um, to this side, there's a giant boulder going in that space and it's sitting right on the bottom of that pallet. So it doesn't have, it doesn't have far to go uh, when I dig down to it. Uh, in the front yard, uh, my snapdragons are still just not, not really doing uh, anything. The yellow ones right there have zero flowers. Um, and my, the multicolored ones up here are starting to bloom a bit, but uh, not a whole lot. I have put a few a few other boulders uh, into place uh, and uh, I talked about in that video if you see paint on the ground it's because that drone video I painted lines on the ground for where things are happening there's a retaining wall going here and uh, steps going in uh, that space the white tulips are still are still blooming here uh, next to Holly who's uh, investigating everything I have a variegated dutzia that I put out uh, last fall and uh, it's got a few uh, flowers on it. Uh, the foliage is I'm really growing this one for the for the foliage because you can see the variegation on it but it's come out it's come out nicely and uh, has started to flower so that's new uh, for this week. Uh, we'll cross the uh, cross the turf. Uh, none of my I have a lot of alliums out here and a few of them are starting to to throw up some buds but this is still the only one. Uh, it's opened a little more uh, since last week. So you can see that purple. Uh, I also, oh, there's a salvia on the other side of the fence uh, that's butted up here. And I have a May night salvia that I'm putting in this week. And I'll talk about some of the salvias in the yard going forward. I have a, I'm gonna have a lot of them out here. Uh, let's see, these uh, uh, King's Blood tulips are really putting on a show now. And for two weeks in a row, I've forgotten to talk about this epimedium. It's almost finished blooming now, but it's been blooming for a couple weeks. The yellow, 
the yellow flowers on it. Um, it will spread and kind of fill into this space. Some uh, These anemones, uh, which kind of close up at night, have just bloomed and bloomed and bloomed. Uh, there's white ones there and purple ones uh, to that side. And then I think the, the pansies have all uh, really taken off here toward the end of the season. Of course, I painted on those the other day. Uh, and I'll swing back. Let's, let's look at this group. This is the worst pansy year um, I've ever had, and it's turned out okay. They, they look great now, but man, it was a slow process to get them here with all the rain I had this winter. But now these groups, these groups are looking good. So I'll spin you back around this way, and we'll go see the star of the show for uh, this week, which is this Miss Kim Lilac. This is about a six foot tall, maybe a little more than six foot tall Miss Kim Lilac that's finally opening up and uh, it's all you can smell uh, out here right now. What I do, the, the, here's my likes and dislikes. Okay, so this is a Korean Lilac. Uh, I'm in zone 7B. This one does just, it doesn't need as many um, chill hours in order to flower. So it's reliably reliable flowering Lilac uh, for the South. It doesn't smell quite the same. It doesn't smell bad, it smells good, but it, uh, it definitely is not as aromatic. It's shorter flowered. I mean, this thing, you guys are seeing this thing coming into peak flower here uh, on a Monday morning. And by next Monday morning, it will probably be uh, mostly finished. Uh, it is a pretty plant. Um, the shape of it's, you know, this one's about six by six and uh, the shape of it is nice. I'm going to actually limb it up a little bit from the bottom and, uh, and then trim it a little bit here at the top to keep this uh, kind of tight, compact shape, but I have it a little more uh, airy uh, down at the bottom. Uh, but the good and the bad, I mean, it's, it's not as good as a, uh, so, you know, other lilac varieties that you can have uh, in the north, but it's what we can do here. And uh, this one, this year, is really beautiful. I mean, it's, it's perfect. We got a lot of, it wasn't a cold winter, but it was cold enough that, uh, uh, you know, this many flowers set some years you'll see you know so, some years it'll be a third uh this many um but this year is really uh putting on a show the fence on the other side of it uh as you can see on this side i scalloped it down coming into the gate on the south side of the uh, house i'll find some things in the backyard that uh, we didn't talk about in the last couple of weeks uh, i planted this uh, chinese snowball viburnum in a video i guess that was a uh, maybe two weeks ago, and I haven't shown it in one of the uh, weekly uh, update videos. Of course, it won't be long before it's done flowering, and hopefully it's gonna put on some growth pretty quickly. I see some new leaves forming on it. This Wygelia I did show last week was uh, just a few flowers on it. Now it's, uh, it's really starting to, uh, to get going. This is another one of those plants, like that Dootsie out front, where you know, I'm not necessarily growing it for the flowers. I just like kind of like the, uh, the dark, the dark foliage, I can put something uh, with a lighter, you know, variegation or light green color near it, and it will uh, it will really pop. These containers continue to uh, fill out. I did show these black pansies last week, but I'm super fascinated by them, so I'll show them again. Uh, they just uh, they really amaze me. Uh, you know, not a flower, but something that's interesting. This is that uh, Saint that Brigadoon Saint John's wort. And as much as I can, you know, spin you around and show you, you know, these pansies in flower, I don't think there's anything that's actually brighter uh, in the yard right this minute than that, that St. John's wort. Uh, my autumn lily Encore Zellia is starting to uh, open some flowers. This was meant to be red and white, um, and uh, the timing's just slightly off on the two. So uh, the white one will be here in full bloom here in the next, uh, the next week or so. Uh, let's cut back through here. There's lots of plants everywhere that are going to be going in the ground soon. Uh, the uh, Miss Scarlet Elysium is still, still firing off. Uh, here's the uh, gold foliage Wygelia. Look at the flowers along the stems on it. This one's a little um, out of shape. Once it uh, finishes blooming, I'm going to cut these longer pieces off of it to uh, fill, out, fill out the middle uh, of the bottom. Uh, there's a uh, Ralston's Hardy Viburnum. This thing has literally bloomed all winter long. 
uh, there's some on N NC State's campus uh, in front of the library, the DHL library uh, on Hillsborough Street that, that I think they put about 60 of them in the landscape job out there and they literally never stop blooming uh, the entire winter. Just a great plant, but that's a Ralston's Hardy Viburnum. Uh, what did I not show last week? Uh, the, uh, my autumn sunburst on Corazellias are just starting to open up. They'll be solid, um, solid flowers on these when you see them, when you see them next week. Behind those, I have two autumn starburst and we'll, we can get in here and just kind of see the difference. Uh, sunburst has more of the pink uh, filling out most of the middle with a tiny white edge. Uh, and then uh, Starburst has more of that white edge. So uh, that's the difference uh, between the two. Starburst is new this year. Uh, let's see, uh, my uh, Tokyo Tower Kyananthus, my narrow upright uh, Chinese fringe tree, has just a few flowers on it this first year. I didn't expect a whole lot from it. I do love this new foliage, it's kind of black. Hope you can see that well, but uh, it's leafed out, looks fantastic. It has very few flowers in its first season uh, in the ground. My contorted Japanese maple is now, you know, again, not a flowering thing, but certainly a super, a super, super showy thing. And the uh, weeping uh, gold, Golden Falls red bud is now uh, on full display. Got very few flowers on it. I don't expect, you know, something you put in the ground the first year is going to put on a big floral uh, display. And so it had very few flowers on it, but now the gold leaves are coming out on it. Those leaves will be three to four times bigger than they are now. The individual leaves will. So um, that's going to be a, a very, very colorful, very, very colorful spot uh, in the yard. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, the dianthus over here now on just full, close to full flower, not quite, but uh, this is a big showy, a big showy spot in the yard. I'm actually supposed to be uh, 38, 39 degrees a few days this week. I was about to put my, uh, start putting some, some annuals and some other things in the ground. I think I'm just going to wait until Friday uh, to do it just in case they uh, lower the, uh, the temperatures, but I have a ton of annual flowers and a ton of perennials that are going uh, in the ground here as soon as uh, soon as any threat of frost uh, is passed. This area along the uh, vegetable garden is going to be entirely uh, dahlias as soon as the any kind of threat of frost is uh, passed. I have um, about 30 uh, in this tray that I did from seed. Uh, these are all singles and the bees uh, absolutely love these. If you watched my uh, dahlia jumpstart video, all the dahlias that I put into the containers are up. This is where they're going in the ground. Again, I'm going to wait a few days here to do that, um, protect them uh, on these colder on these colder nights. Uh, just interestingly, uh, I'm in zone 7B and I'm in the kind of the transition area where dahlias will come back uh, in the ground. And so uh, these two are two that have come back uh, from from last year's. Uh, there's another one that's coming back from last year's. Uh, so I lost probably 50% of my dahlias in the ground. Uh, and if, if this is all I'm going to have come back, there's two more. Uh, there's two more that are coming up right there. And so if you're in zone eight uh, or higher, you don't have to dig your dahlias up in the winter. And you know, um, if you're in zone two to seven, uh, you, you need to dig them up in the winter and protect them. Again, I'm right in the transition area, so some come back and some and some don't. Uh, what else is happening over here? All of the pieces over here on the left, uh, a lot of them are going in the ground here uh, in the next week or so, and uh, an other annual other annual flowers. Again, I'm not going to put these in the ground uh, with it being 37, 38. Uh, in the next few days, it just seems kind of seems kind of pointless. And if they change the forecast quickly on me, then uh, I would hate to have to come out here and cover all of this. And last thing I'll show you for this week: all of my potatoes have reached the top of the grow bags, and I have filled them in uh, pretty much to the uh, pretty much to the top. This bag right here has got another another round. I'll let this foliage get up to the top of that bag, and then I do need to fill that one in more. But you can see. Uh, potatoes are looking great. If you didn't see the drone planting video from last week, I'll link it up here in the uh, corner. 
uh, you might want to go and take a look at that. These white lines that are on the ground are about to be uh, stone, are about to be uh, stone paths pretty soon. Peonies here looking great, but haven't started showing any color yet. So thank you guys for following along with these uh, weekly update videos. When you see this again next week, there's going to be a lot more pieces in the ground. I'm going to do a video here in the next week or two just of gold foliage things that are in this yard. Uh, that abelia right there. And, um, as, you know, we just talked about the uh, red bud, uh, things like the uh, Florida sunshine elysium right there, hosta that are coming up. Just a ton of gold foliage things that are in this yard that look uh, great this time of year. So thanks for following along.